Hi, I'm Jonathan Weinberg, and this is Drawing with Fountain Pens, where I look at fountain pens and art and design. You don't have to be an artist, I think, to get something out of this uh, video or my videos, but you do have to love fountain pens. As always, if this is useful information, please subscribe and push the uh, like button. Um, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe, and uh, it's the best way to support the channel. Um, today, I am very excited because I recently got a pen that I've always wanted and coveted. It's the Pilot Custom 84, 845, which has the Urushi um, lacquered finish, and it's a really beautiful pen. I got it in Vermilion. Um, pi I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of Pilot pens. I think um, if you're an artist and you draw with pens, they have some of the best uh, options and contemporary pens. Um, the Falcon um, line of pens and the 743 is, I think, probably the pen that I, uh, draws the best. I really like using it to draw with. But all their pens, even even their cheapest uh, disposable pen writes really, really well. Um, uh, so they make terrific pens, but so many of their pens tend to be black, and uh, which is nothing wrong with that. Um, and it's always very elegant and conservative, but it's nice to have a pen that is this incredibly beautiful red color. And of course it has this very special finish, which is, uh, so famous uh, in so many different kinds of Japanese crafts and beautiful bowls that are made with Urishi uh, finish. It's um, uh, the way it's done, as I understand, is it uh, they get the lacquer itself from a, a tree, the Urishi tree, and um, uh, it is then painted and dried several times, very, several layers of this uh, beautiful um, color is applied and polished and it is done by hand and it takes quite a long time. So that is one of the reasons it's so expensive. In the instructions that comes with the pen, they warn you about UV light, that the Yurushi um, lacquer is very, very tough but it fades in light, so you shouldn't leave the pen out under the sun. The other thing that makes this pen so wonderful is the nib. This is the size 15 nib on this pen, and it writes very, very beautifully. Now, what I'm going to do today is just sort of, this is really more like a first look, because I really think you have to live with the pen and see how well it writes and draws. I mean, so far I do a drawing and a writing sample and I'm amazed right out of the box. It just draws and writes beautifully, absolutely smoothly, and really gives the M800, my most favorite pen, a run for the money, I think, in terms of just the way the uh, pen glides over the page and the flow of the ink, etc., etc. Um, it's a, a very expensive pen. Uh, it lists for, I believe, $900. So uh, in the United States, and it would be, I guess it would be the most expensive pen I own by its list price. But because of the Japanese exchange rate and various other things, I was able to get it for under, well under $500, which still is very, very expensive but is my limit. I won't spend more than $500 on a pen because I won't use it. And I feel that this, even though this is expensive, I will use this pen. I might not, I might not take it on trips. That would be the different, the difference uh, with the pen. Um, you'll, it, it, it is, it is beautiful pen. It posts very, very well. And in fact, the um, cap has a little liner in it um, that protects the finish, which is very, very hard, by the way. The 
ebonite uh, material and the lacquer, Urishi lacquer, actually makes a very, very hard surface. But I've noticed a lot of people review the pen and say, well, they're not going to post it because it's so beautiful they don't want to harm the pen. And my feeling is, is that you want your pen to be both beautiful and useful. So I probably will post it. It comes in a nice box. This is the outer box. And this is a nice touch so that it comes out easily. And it's this nice wood. Pine, I think. And this is and you get a cartridge. It's a cartridge converter and your various uh, materials from Pilot, explanation of the Urishi finish, how that's done. Um, I'm not sure what this says, but looks important. And then here's the pen in this beautiful little velvet. Uh, resting place. This really does have the look of a coffin a little bit. And here is this beautiful pen in this beautiful color. Lovely nib. It's already inked up. When you take the cap off, it posts very, very securely. And then you see this beautiful nib, which is two-tone, size 15, and this is a medium. You open it up. And it has a cartridge converter. This is the Con 70 converter. I would say if I have any major criticism of the pen, I'm not a big fan of the Pilot converters, although they, the ink is a very good flow because it's not just this sort of empty converter. It has this little, um, little plunger thing inside, and I think that does help the ink um, flow better. Um, so that's a good thing. But um, I always find it a little tricky to get the ink into these things. You have to push them several times, and you really have to use both hands. So I'm not a big fan of the Con 70 converter. And what I recommend, actually, when you fill it, is instead of using the push mechanism, I use a needle to uh, fill the ink into the converter. And actually, I get a lot more ink into it that way. Um, it's not... A huge pen and it's not a small pen. It is almost exactly the same size as the Pilot Custom 823. Very similar size and weight and in fact they both use similar nibs, similar 15, size 15. Pilot has their own size system um, nib. Have similar bands so the bottom of the top but of course, this is a flat top pen. It's this gold band here, black top, and flat on the bottom, while the Custom A23 is more of a cigar shape. Well, it is a cigar shaped pen. Um, in being a flat top pen, it is um, in a certain way more similar to the Custom. 912, just slightly bigger than a 912. Um, it's a point of comparison. The Pilot Petropolitan is a little smaller. The pen is 28.1 grams. The cap is 11.1 grams. When you measure it, it's 5.7 uh, inches. And it is six and a half inches um, when it's posted. The Contemporary Custom Series really goes all the way back to 1992 um, with the Custom 74, which is this very popular cigar-shaped pen. Um, 
It has a 14 karat nib and it's, it's really quite affordable. Um, if it were, it's a really great place to start um, your pen journey if you want to get a pen with a 14k nib. Um, and then uh, Pilot introduced a whole series of pens that um, like the um, custom 742 and the 743 and um, and then the vacuum filler, the custom A23, which people love. Uh, it is a great, really great pen. Um, these are all cigar shaped pens, the most part. Um, the uh, custom 845 has this flat top and flat bottom. So in many ways, the uh, Custom 845 is, looks very much like the Parker Duofold um, that it goes all the way back to the 1920s. You can see how close this really is. Um, or I suppose too, uh, it looks something like, or even more so, looks like the Parker Century 100, which was Parker's uh, return to their roots to the duo fold. You can see how close actually these pens are. It's interesting that we're so used now to pilots, pens, and and the look of them that the Japanese don't get pen makers don't get accused of cloning um, these pens in the same way that Chinese pen makers are accused of doing that. And I think a lot of the things that happens with that's happening with Chinese pens happened with uh, a long time ago with Japan when I was very young to say that something was made in Japan had some of the connotations of being cheap, right? Um, and now, of course, we think of Japanese craftsmen and the, the Japanese quality and Japanese cars as all being the best made things. And now um, I think we're going through a similar transition when it comes to things that are made in China. So what do I think of this pen? Well, it's very hard to convey this in a video, but the way the pen feels, the, uh, the sort of luminescence of the finish is, is really beautiful. And, um, and I find that really very appealing. It writes very, very beautifully. It will take several months to really see how, um, how much I love this pen, right? And, and whether it will be among my top favorites. I would say that if it comes down to how well does it write, I would, um, it writes very, very well, but it doesn't actually, I think, write any better than the custom 823 writes, um, uh, given the fact that the nib is very, very similar. It is, it is basically the same nib that is on the custom 823 and the custom 743. I will say though, at least initially with writing with this pen, that I am not having any problems with flow. A lot of people report problems with the 743 and the 823 that they get skipping. And the solution to that is to get an ebonite feed um, and replace the feed, which doesn't cost a lot of money. I've talked about that in, in other uh, videos. So far in writing with this pen, there's absolutely no problem with the flow. There's no skipping. It just writes beautifully. So um, I don't know why that is, whether Pilot has perfected this nib or the feed or is doing something different. But right out of the box, it writes really, really beautifully. So how does it write? Well, very, very smoothly. This is um, Pilot's own Tacky Sumi Black Ink. This is Rhodia paper. It is quite wet, not too wet, but nicely wet. And very, very, very smooth. There isn't a huge amount of line variation, but there is some. That doesn't really write backwards. This is a medium nib.
no skipping, writes very fast. Just a delight. I started the drawing with pencil on paper and then I added a little bit of watercolor to give it some color and then I used the uh, custom 845 to do the outline. <laughs> 